winter storm warning in effect for heavy snow. Those planning travel in the warned area should be prepared for hazardous conditions and plan accordingly. The extended column test is 90 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters deep. So I can take my probe and measure it, or I also have centimeter marks on my ski pole. So I can just find 45 centimeters and double that. And I need to take this apart anyway. So there's 45 and 45. So there's a couple ways that I can cut the back. One way is I can actually, um, there's certain ski poles that'll actually fit with this snow saw. I can attach it and use that. The other way, if I don't have that, is uh, I can have a cord. And I wouldn't recommend these wires unless you've got these, uh, steel and carbon fiber probes, um, or just anything that's not a carbon fiber probe. Because with carbon, if I nick it, it tends to be weaker. So um, with these uh, combo ones are fine, or with just the non-carbon fiber ones, that's fine. What I do, I can do this on my own, or I can have help since I have help. Yeah, so I just wrap it around both probes and we can hold that probe in place. Thank you. As we now just saw it back and forth. And these cords are nice when there's any sort of crust or when there's just harder snow. Sweet. All right. The extended column test is nice because it's a wider column. So I can look at initiation or how hard do I have to hit this column to make a weak layer fail? And I can look at propagation, meaning if I make it fail, will it propagate? Will it go across the column or will it go across the slope? And some of the recent research also indicates that you're more likely to have failure and fracture propagate from a thin side to a thick side, which is why you often see avalanches triggered from rocks or triggered from the trees. The shallower spot, you tend to see propagation versus if you trigger in the thicker spot, it doesn't necessarily propagate across. So I'll again take a quick step back and see if there's a thinner or thicker side to my slab. In this case, it doesn't seem like it. So I can pick either side. If there is, just go to the thinner side. And then I basically do a compression test on one side or the other. So 10 from the wrist. from the elbow and we can see at 12 I initiated that failure underneath the crust but it didn't propagate right so I'm gonna just keep going 14, 15, 17, 18. now this is starting to interfere with my test so I'll just move it out of the way and again you can see it didn't propagate Now it didn't propagate, it didn't initiate even, did it? So, but I'm still suspicious about this. So one thing that I do is just give it a couple extra hard taps. It failed and propagated in that same tap. So what that tells me is if I hit a thin spot, maybe the slabs Maybe the slab's only this thick. If I can affect that depth core layer, that weakest snow layer, likely, if I initiate that failure, it's gonna propagate across. And that's a lot of snow that might move down the hill, right? So when I look at this snow pit, one thing I would say is I can't make a decision on if I'm gonna ski this slope just on one snow pit, right? I'm gonna be looking at, is there cracking? Is there collapsing? Is there avalanche activity? And if I have a chance, if I'm efficient, I can also dig a couple snow pits and begin to paint a mental map. But the bottom line, 
all over the West this year, we have this really weak foundation. And this weak foundation in the snowpack tells me that I just need to be cautious because if I can initiate something, I will likely see it propagate and cause an avalanche.